In this video, I'm going to teach you what occurs when we do radical substitution reactions with substances that contain benzylic or allylic hydrogens. First of all, I need to remind you what a benzylic or allylic hydrogen is. A benzylic hydrogen is a hydrogen that is attached to a carbon that is one position away from a benzene ring. If I remove that hydrogen radically, I end up forming a benzyl radical, that is, a radical at this position. I've invented a song that can help you remember that the benzyl position is one carbon away from a benzene ring. It goes like this. Benzyl, 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 benz, one away from his friends. Similarly, an allyl hydrogen is a hydrogen that is attached to a carbon that's one carbon away from a carbon-carbon double bond. If I remove that hydrogen radically, it ends up giving me a radical carbon that's once again one position away from a carbon-carbon double bond. I also have a song for remembering that the allyl position is the position that is one carbon away from a carbon-carbon double bond. It goes like this. Allyl, 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 one away from his pals. Ooh. You have to put the ooh at the end of the song or it just doesn't stick. As you can see in this slide, benzyl and allyl radicals are very, very stable and are much more stable even than tertiary radicals, which are, as I mentioned in an earlier video, more stable than secondary radicals, which are more stable than primary radicals, which are more stable than methyl radicals. Vinyl radicals, which are radicals in which I've got a single unpaired electron on one of the two carbons in the carbon-carbon double bond, are also comparably unstable. You might ask, why in the world are allyl and benzyl radicals so stable? The reason is because of resonance. As we've seen with allyl carbocations, allyl radicals can also rearrange by resonance by having this electron go into here and one of these two electrons go into here to form a carbon-carbon double bond while pumping the second of these two electrons up onto this carbon, as shown here. Thus, this radical is resonance stabilized and is in reality balanced and shared between the leftmost carbon and the rightmost carbon. In the case of benzyl radicals, this radical can resonate through four total atoms, the one shown here at the benzyl carbon, the one shown here at this position, the one shown at this position, and at this position. If we continue resonating back, we end up right at the first resonance structure at which we started. Thus, you can see that benzyl and allyl radicals are the most stable radicals in this series. So what implications does that have for real life chemistry? Well, if I take an alkene like this that has an allyl carbon, and I treat it with X2, either Br2 or Cl2, and heat or light radical conditions, I will end up putting one molecule of the halogen on the allyl position. The mechanism by which that proceeds is exactly as we've discussed before. In the initiation step, this X2 breaks into two individual X radicals. One of those X radicals abstracts a hydrogen off of this molecule. From which position will it abstract that hydrogen? Of course, from the allyl position, because that gives me a carbon radical here, which is resonance stabilized. The second molecule of X radical will then come in and form a bond at that location, giving me this product. An analogous thing occurs when I take a molecule that has a benzyl carbon and treat it with X2 and light or heat, radical conditions. I ultimately abstract a hydrogen from this benzyl carbon and then have a second molecule of X radical come in and form a bond at the benzyl position. This is the major product formed. I'd now like to introduce you to another reagent that's very, very important. It's called NBS. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny... Anyway, NBS is an abbreviation for n bromosuccinimide It happens to be a mild radical brominating reagent that doesn't add to the alkene at all. Here's how this goes down. This is the structure of NBS. Once again, it's essentially a source of bromine radical. If I take NBS and react it with an alkene of some sort under radical conditions, that is light or heat and peroxide, it will, for all practical purposes, always place a bromine one position away from the double bond, right here. This is, once again, the allyl position. One away from his pals. Ooh. 
That's restated once again in this paragraph. NBS adds a bromine to the carbon that's one position away from the double bond, which is the allylic or benzylic carbon, because that's where the most stable radical is located. This brings us to an excellent lecture problem. What will be the major product or products of the reaction of one methyl cyclohexene with each of the following reagents under these conditions? You're welcome, of course, to pause the video now as I'm going to share the answer with you momentarily. Here's the first. One methyl cyclohexene being treated with NBS heat and peroxide. These are radical conditions. Here's the overall reaction. As I stated before, if you take NBS, heat and peroxide, and treat an alkene with it, it will always place a bromine one carbon away from the double bond. You should notice that there are three different carbons in this molecule that are one carbon away from the double bond. Thus, this reaction gives rise to three different products. A bromine at this position, which is one away from the double bond, a bromine at this position, which is also one away from the double bond, and a bromine at this position, which is one away from the double bond. The major product or products of all of these is likely to be these two in some relatively close ratio because both of them involve secondary radicals, which are more stable than the primary radical that would give rise to this product here. Let's take a look at our second conditions. Treating one methyl cyclohexene with Br2 by itself in dichloromethane. Now this is a reaction you've seen before from an earlier chapter. As we've seen earlier, the double bond comes out here and forms a bond with a bromine, giving rise to a three-membered ring with a bromine at the point. The second molecule of bromide comes in and attacks from the backside, ultimately giving rise to this product in a racemic mixture. This product is interesting because each of these positions is both a stereocenter, so in reality there are four different potential stereoisomers that you could get and will get in complete 50-50 mixtures.